All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start this episode off with a full confession. I'm just going to get it out there. When I first met today's guest, when I first met him years ago, I said, wow, what a good looking young man. And he told me, oh, yeah, I'm married. So that's great. You know, I figured, all right, guy early in his 20s, you know, he's married. That's awesome. And he tells me he has kids that are like teenagers. <laughs> like, and I'm not good at math. I come to find out. He's a lot older than me. Not a lot, a little bit, but I was just like shocked. Kobe Dennis of the Greater Providence YMCA, also just one of the most outstanding community leaders we have here uh, in Providence, in Rhode Island, in Southern New England, and really, you know, the world's a better place. Uh, he's a veteran, ladies and gentlemen. He is just uh, an all around great guy. And, and I kid you not, the day after Pete Cardi met you, we were, we were going somewhere and he goes, how old is that Kobe guy? I said, a lot older than you think he was. I thought he was a kid. I thought he was like, you know, fresh out of college or something. No, he's got like, you know, he, he, he's uh, grown children. He's been around the world and ah, yeah, yeah, as they say uh, on, on one song or something like that. But nonetheless, Kobe Dennis, it's great to see you, sir. How are you? <laughs> great to see you, man. You made me, uh, you made me feel younger, but yes, yeah, 49 years <laughs> 49 years old now, man. I think I met you. I was about 40. That was a while ago. Yeah, we, we've yeah. known each other about 10 yeah. years now. Yeah. 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 So well, you're not a stranger to uh to to the community, which is, you know, something that a lot of people are, I think, when they get involved with civic leadership and everything, they they're a face, but you're an actual presence. You've been doing so many different things over the course of, of many years, uh, because it's your community and you you work hard on it. Now you've uh started working. Uh, more in depth with the Greater Providence YMCA and, you know, coming through this whole transition now that we've been in with, you know, with COVID and the pandemic and everything, it's just been uh, such a need that you're filling there. So let's, let's step back in the way back machine. You are a veteran. You, you are, you, so kind of the, 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 the Reader's Digest history of, of Kobe Dennis. Absolutely. So, you know, once again, thanks for having me. Um, you know, you know, I'm a big, big fan, big supporter. I'll pay you twenty dollars um, later for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> big fan, big supporter. So, um, yeah, in the way back machine, uh, you know, uh, veteran, and you know, once I returned from the military from the Gulf War, you know, I just realized that a lot of things uh, weren't happening in the community, and like a lot of people do, um, you look around and you're looking for somebody that's doing it, and then you finally look in the mirror and say, oh, I think that just may have to be me. Sure. So instead of waiting on others, um, I just decided to start a bunch of programs, Ben. I've been, I probably had about 30, 40 programs over the last 10, 15 years. And it's not because any of them failed that I moved on. I just always found something new to get into, um, you know, whether it's helping the young people, helping seniors. And, and I've always had the inaptability to pivot. Yeah. And here we are with COVID and I've had to use the pivot, man, pivot foot, kind of like a, a basketball player for sure, going back and forth to the things that uh, people need. That pivot has just become like a, a constant yeah, spin, yes. like a revolving door. <laughs> what are we doing this week? What changes do we have to account for? But you you, you mentioned the various programs that you've uh, you've been involved with and started. And, you know, yeah, sure, there's going to be people out there say, well, gee, 30 to 40 or whatever, however many the amount is rather. But the fact of the matter is uh, you've, managed to keep up with the youth and i don't know if anybody's knew this but youth change their mind every day i mean you're a dad how often do the does the wardrobe changes before they even get out the door i mean it's their interests and their you know what they're attracted to and, and something that speaks to them changes constantly and it's one of the things i i've always admired about you is you've got that young spirit and you realize okay you've been one step ahead and say okay we we've got to we've got to keep moving because if it's old, it's going to grow stale. And it's just, it's not, it, it's kids are going to get in trouble. So you, you talk about some of the, the, the sports program athletics, which is very important. Right. Uh, you know, so what else, I mean, talk to some of the programs that you've done, just, I mean, you've had great success with them. Right. So, you know, let's, let's talk about the pivot. Like you said, and I, I think you made a great point. If I didn't have the ability to pivot when things like COVID came, when, when the shutdown occurred, so now I'd be stuck, right? Because all if I all I had was you know um, one layer, one level type uh, activities or programs for the kids or for adults, they would be over, right? For the last eight or nine months, but that hasn't happened. So with the collaboration of the YMCA and a lot of you know the the, the organizations that I run myself, we've just been able to to pivot uh, to what the people need and what they're able to do with the pandemic going on. 
So some of those things are uh, uh, food. We looked at a lot of the things that folks aren't able to go to the restaurants, folks aren't able to enjoy a good meal. So we partnered with some local restaurants, a Latin restaurant, uh, Luigi's in Johnston, um, you know, Paquette's in, in East Providence. We, we partnered with them and we was able to serve food um, through the YMCA and a few grants from the state. We was able to serve food and bring it to people that couldn't come out of their houses. And they was able to enjoy a fresh hot meal and dessert from some quality restaurants. Sure. So that was great. We did that for months. Yeah. Uh, we also, you know, uh, as far as the young people, we set online classes. Um, we also printed for free. You know, we partnered with a company that said, well, these kids are on distance learning. You know, how are they printing out? They don't, most of them don't have laptops, never sure. mind a printer at home. Right, right. So uh, we, we pivoted with that and said, we had some companies and some friends donate reams of paper, um, cases of paper, and uh, we did that for the entire last three or four months, and we're still doing that. So someone, a parent would email me, hey, it's little Johnny's uh, homework assignment, or he needs some crosswords puzzles or coloring pages. Sure. They would uh, send me an email, I'd print it out, and then we'd deliver it to their house, or they could pick it up if they could. So mm -hmm. just anything that we could do within the community uh, to help them during this time we've been doing. So I say we as the YMCA Greater Providence, and then on the weekends, you know, I've delivered soup, uh, right now we're delivering pizza or uh, free pizzas. It's called Love, Peace and Pizza. So people donate, yeah. people donate, um, you know, whatever, $10. And we take that money and, and deliver a pizza to somebody just That's to make great. them smile. And, yeah. and the, the face, the looks on their faces when that, that first thing they say, that pizza's not mine. I didn't, oh, I didn't deliver. <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, no, this is from the community. Somebody yeah. just wants to send you a nice gesture. Oh, and it just lights folks up. So that's sure. the type of things I'm doing. No, that's incredible. I mean, the when I reached out to you uh, a few days ago, I said, hey, I want to schedule, set it up to get you on. You said, I'll get back to you with my schedule right now. I'm in the streets. <laughs> and I think I think there was it may have been intentional or it may have not may not have been. But oh. you said in and and, it, and that's the whole thing. You can be on the street. You could oh, be out there. Just uh, you were in and, oh. you know, doing the work that needs to be done and, and really. I mean, that's, you, you, you never waited for somebody to say, Hey, uh, all right, let's do that. You, you, you create it, you create it. And that's a huge thing uh, for people who, you know, are curious as to what's going on with your involvement with the greater Providence YMCA and stuff. Uh, you're kind of, how do you, how did you like come up with a job description for you? That's, uh, I mean, that's only, that's something only a Colonel could do really. I think uh, if, if he could even do that, but how did, how did that whole, like, what, what does this encompass as far as what you're doing and how you're working with our, uh, which it's an outstanding organization, Yes, you know? So, and and uh, so how, talk to me about this relationship you got. So the YMCA being, you know, 150 year organization. And, you know, I've, I was, I've always been very impressed with the history of the YMCA, although I was a Boys and Girls Club um, guy for, for many years. I've okay. always uh, always uh, respected what the YMCA did, whether going to conferences and meeting up with Y folks. I've always respected uh, this the, uh, steadfast ability to, to create programs and be on the cutting edge with youth care and all of this stuff. The Y was great. So I joined the board once the Colonel crossed over from retiring from the state police. Now, a lot of people don't know that story. Now you go from the colonel of the state police to the CEO of the YMCA. Now people, now people have to really think about it before they open their mouths and say things like, oh, that was an inside job and all that. First of all, you don't become the CEO of the YMCA because you're trying to make money or, or, you, or you need a job. Everyone, it's, not it's, it's not really a get rich quick scheme. It's not a get rich quick scheme <laughs> and it's not a glamorous job. Yeah. Both have no idea that Steve sure. O'Donnell could be in Florida mm -hmm. like many other snowbirds Sure. Um, he could have took his pension. You know, he was a U.S. Marshal and yes. um, he, he was um, he worked in the prison system and then he went to the state police. So he actually went up the ranks rightfully. He did it the right way. Sure. So when he retired, the one thing he said was, first of all, he said, oh, I'm not doing anything. Uh, yeah. So about a month later, he calls me up and says, hey, I'm thinking about taking this job with the YMCA. And I'm like, are you crazy? Do you know what that because he never knew about the nonprofit world. Sure. He never really did. And I said, do you understand what that job entails? You know that there's, it's, it's just like, you know, the state police, you will work seven days a week. You will, the weekends will be done. You will get calls all the time. He's like, I'm ready. So, you know, fast forward, uh, myself, Ed Cooley, um, you know, a, a plenty of other uh, 
very prominent folks in the community, especially in the minority community, he, he wanted us to get on the board because he said, listen, if I'm gonna do this in the in urban core, especially where it's needed, I need people that represent um, those communities. Sure. So man, he, he reached out myself, Wayne Montague, there's Alan Williams. There's a bunch of us that are on these boards that are usually not on boards, such as the YMCA. It's usually yeah. full of doctors, lawyers, judges, and they're on the board too. Sure. But now this group is so diverse that we've been able to move forward and get so many things done. Well, so that brings us, yeah, that brings us to what we're doing right now. So one of the things that kept coming along is diversity, diversity, diversity. So they, they needed a diversity and inclusion um, representative. Um, and I was in the midst of leaving another job. So I resigned from the board and I applied for the job. I went to a rigorous, <laughs> a rigorous interview process. And a lot of people, once again, in Rhode Island, if you're not, if you're not privy to what's going on or you're not really paying attention, you'll think, oh, oh the colonel must have just given Kobe that job. Well, the colonel doesn't give handouts. No. Um, and I don't accept them, actually. So I interviewed very hard for this job. It came down to myself and, and a few other folks, and I, and I got the job. So I resigned yeah. from the board, got the job. Um, and fast forward, uh, I've been here almost a year. Mm -hmm. We've just been trying to cater to the communities we serve. Mm -hmm. uh, we want people to know that the why is more than gym and swim. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's what happened. And luckily, we pivoted. We was pivoting in that direction anyway, because as soon as COVID came, the gym's all closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So luckily we, we, we partnered with Cardi's. They were the first people to call it. I'm not just saying this because it's you. Yeah. Cardi's was the first people to call Steve and myself and say, what do you guys want to do? Yeah. That's that, true to their nature. I mean, they, that, that's real. Yeah. Well, and this is, you know, goes back uh, two years ago. Uh, the Colonel joined me in the car. We did not drive. Uh, he, 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 I, I don't blame him. Uh, he, you know, everybody else is fine, but you know, the Colonel, I think he's, he, he's, he's like, look, I've taken my chances enough. Uh, I'm going to just, let's just, can we just do this in the parking lot? And he did, he was great. But one thing we did before he turned the cameras on, he said, Ben, hold on a second. He goes, I just want you to see something. And so I'm like, okay, what? He goes, just wait. Car drives by. It's a group of young kids. He goes, that's our community. Woman pulls up. He goes, let me get out of the car and go help that person. And he walked over, gave the woman directions where she was trying to get to, what she was trying to find. She wasn't even looking for the YMCA. There's a medical office, I think, uh, in the same, right around this way. He, he gave me the, like, like he was asking me if it was okay if he took a minute. <laughs> no, no, you get back. No, he's like, yes, yeah, sure. That's great. <laughs> Have, take all the time you need. Uh, and he got in the car and he said, look, this is why I'm here. This is why we're here. And this is why we need to be here. And this is the community we represent. And these are the people we're serving. And he said, he goes, I don't care where your plate's from. I don't care what your vehicle is. I don't care if you're walking, if you're riding the bus, this is our community. He goes, and we need to be here. And this is, it's very important to him. And, and I know he had that ad attitude and mantra uh, when throughout his leadership in the Rhode Island State Police and everything he's done, he's done very well. Bringing you on board has been, uh, I think, a, a fantastic benefit to the entire uh, YMCA organization, Greater Providence. It has a number of branches, and you know, it's you, you have to pivot, you have to change and adapt with the times. But what do you think you guys have done over the past eleven months? That once we come out of the other side, you know, as we're getting closer, what do you see as something that? is going to be an even greater uh, strong point of the YMCA, Greater Providence YMCA, or just in general, what do you think is gonna be one of the strong points you take from this? Because you can't go through this experience we've just had and forget everything. You have to learn something. So what is it in your mind? I think service to community. I think we really honed in on the fact that uh, what our job really entails. Um, I, I really think for many years, as I've asked a lot of it, in the city kids like, you know, why don't you go to the Y anymore? Or are you a member of the Y? I think there was sort of a barrier and this is no knock on the past Y employees or people that came before me or people that even working there now. But I think the Y turned into like a club, like yeah. a place that you, if you paid a monthly fee, you were part of a club. Yeah. And, and I, don't, I don't think that's what the Y's, you know, the Young Men's Christian Association, I don't think that's what the values are. I don't right. think that's what it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be this, you know, group of, folks that only can't afford to be there. Sure. It's supposed to be a place you can walk in, like when the old YMCA was on Broad Street, uh, where Crossroads were, was, that was, what many people don't know, that was a YMCA and it was there since 
you know, for my 50 years, for oh, sure. Sure, sure. Um, and that was a place you could walk in. I don't remember ever paying a dime. Um, we would walk in and you could walk the track or you could, you know, they had to go like this because it was a track over your head. Mm -hmm. uh, you could walk the track or you could sign up to go swimming or you could get food or clothes. That's what the YMCA was about. I want to bring that back. And mm -hmm. I think we're doing so over the last 11 months, we, we've done that. We have a suit drive coming up. Like when is the YMCA ever given out suits? I mean, and all sure. the workers, all the people that work here say, wow, that's an amazing idea. Our parents come in all the time and say, ask us for resources. And now we're going to be that resource. I, uh, I may have one or two contributions for the suit drive because, uh, COVID has, uh, yeah. I, I, I need to do more of the track. Uh, so, so I might have one or two jackets. I could certainly give a, a much better life by giving to you uh, in, in that case. Uh, Kobe, as you go forward, uh, where can people, you know, check in with you and connect with you and learn more about everything that's going on and, you know, whether they're here in Rhode Island, Southern New England, or just in general, because uh, the programming you also can help people in other parts of the country or other parts of the world. Okay. They have questions how to set things up, you know, mentoring, which is obviously a big thing you've done uh, for many years. How can people reach out to you? What's, what's the best way? Yeah, just a simple email. I would love just a simple email. Um, it's just K Dennis at gpymca.org. So All that's right. great Providence. I'm going yeah, mag to magically make that appear on the screen right over here somewhere or something like <laughs> yeah, that, or I I'll, that. I'll figure it out. I'll Google how to do that. But uh, <laughs> Kobe, I wish you all the best in 2021. And as soon as we can, you know, get uh, that human contact thing, give you a big hug and get in the car. We'll do some driving around and singing and stuff. That'll be great. Uh, that. <laughs> you know, and people will say, Hey, who's that kid in the passenger seat? Oh, that's Kobe <laughs> Dennis. Have you ever met him? He's a nice guy, sweetheart, real sweetheart of a gentleman. So Kobe, <laughs> Kobe Dennis of the Greater Providence YFCA, sir. Thank you so much. You're uh, truly a uh, one of the bright spots of uh, Southern New England and you know, really the world. I, I love you and I mean it. All right. Love you too. And uh, thank you.